Okay guys, this is one of the most hotly anticipated brand new launches in Malaysia, the all new Toyota Innova Xenix. Now, this is a large SUV slash MPV crossover and you can have this with either a seven seats or eight seats and a choice between a petrol or a hybrid powertrain. So let's see what this new Xenix is all about. Now, first things first, this does not replace the MPV Innova. The Xenix is essentially a brand new, different model that is slotted above the current model. This is a bigger, more expensive, more premium flagship version of the Innova family. You can see this as an Innova Plus or Innova Max, but Toyota calls it the Innova Xenix. Next, let's move on to prices because there's a big change there as well. The old Innova started from 130 to 140,000 ringgit, but this new version slots in at a much higher price range. There's going to be two different variants to choose from. There is the base 2 liter petrol going for 165,000 ringgit, and then there's this, the flagship Xenix Hybrid Electric going for 202,000 ringgit. But together with the big price hike, the new name comes a total and complete makeover. The old versions of the Innova, including the Answer before that, were all based on a ladder frame chassis with rear wheel drive setup. In fact, the last two Innovas had the exact same chassis as a Hilux pickup truck. That's all changed with this new version. This now runs the latest TNGA-C platform, which means it is a unibody or monocoque construction with the engine running the front wheels and the engine as well is mounted transversely instead of longitudinal. This using the modular TNGA platform also means it shares a lot of components with the Toyota Camry and the RAV4, both far more upmarket models compared to the old Innova. Also completely different is the entire shape of this car. Gone is the one box MPV or van shape of before and in comes a far more modern MPV slash SUV crossover. If you are to imagine the old Innova being matched together with a Land Cruiser, this is what you end up with. And I think this is a successful makeover. Pretty much everything on this car is just so big, bold and brash. You've got this large front grille over here, a really high bonnet, an over-exaggerated wheel arches, especially on the back, full LED lighting all around. I think this looks pretty good. Now, of course, this sits on a very different price range compared to the old car, but there is no denying that this looks far more expensive, far more substantial compared to the old Innova. From the back, it is a looker as well, but perhaps the simpler, more straight cut design at the back here is not quite a perfect match to the more organic, more rounded front end. And especially from this angle, you start to see that the wheels are severely undersized. The rims are plenty big enough. These are 18 inches finished with a nice gunmetal color. And I think that looks great and it's got really high performance tires as well. But I think the rubber is a little bit too small, a little bit too low profile, perhaps bigger, chunkier tires would complete the look much better. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments below. Inside the interior has also gone through a complete change. This is unrecognizable compared to the old version and that's a good thing obviously. This feels, like I said before, far more expensive than the base Innova. The top half has this nice leather covers, leather paddings. They've got a lot of contrasting silver bits and materials. There's a nice pattern on the leather seats as well. Like I said, this feels like a premium car through and through. Now, of course, all the plastics do feel like a typical Toyota. It's pretty much everything top to bottom. It's all hard plastics, but the finishing is top notch. Even the graining on the plastic do look good as well. Now you can spot one or two, you know, cheaper plastics here and there. You've got some on the top of the steering wheel over here, the surroundings of the window controls, but by and large, this is a properly built interior. The center screen is also very nicely integrated with the rest of the design. This is a thin screen, so you don't have the big and bulky CRT back like in most other UMW Toyota models. You've also got physical controls for most of the important stuff. You've got volume plus and minus, back, power, 
and home menu and then this also supports wireless apple carplay like so there is also a wireless charger for your mobile phone under the center armrest everything is very nicely thought out here the meter cluster however is an odd mix of analog dials and digital meters so yeah it doesn't look quite as modern as a brand new car for 2023 should be but in terms of the basics, Toyota has nailed most of it. The steering wheel is nicely adjustable, both tilt and telescopic. The seats are nice and wide. It's very comfortable in front here. And there's loads of space for your knees, for your legs. There's a proper footrest on the left. This is a very comfortable place for long distance journeys as, you know, this car should be. Another big change is the move from a traditional handbrake in the old Innova into an electronic parking brake in this one. This is a simple change that once you've gotten used to, you can never go back to the old version. While the front is practically identical between the two variants, once you get to the back here, there are pretty significant differences between the petrol version and the flagship hybrid. This being the hybrid, there is a full panoramic sunroof at the top and a pair of VIP style captain seats for the second row. The base petrol gets a wide bench seating here instead. For the captain seats, they are nice and wide, very good for long distance journeys and you've also got this adjustable armrest in the middle here as well. The seats are also adjustable in pretty much every direction and the window of adjustments is just massive. You can slide it all the way to the front like so to give either maximum leg room or bigger load bay at the back or move it all the way back to get maximum leg room for the VIP sitting in the middle row. You can of course recline the backrest as well with a wide range of motions over here. And there is a fold up center tray with cup holders down the middle. Unfortunately, this seems to be made of really cheap and shiny plastic. So that's not quite a good thing. And even the mechanism to fold it up or down feels kind of flimsy. One thing that I do have to mention is that for the hybrid version, the extra batteries sit below the front two seats. So you can see that there are very bulky plastic covers just under the front seats. Now this really limits the tow room for those sitting in a center row. The regular petrol version without the additional batteries with the rear bench, I think is far more comfortable for bigger families. Another negative point is that despite being more than 200,000 ringgit here in Malaysia, we still miss out on the really fancy powered recline and Ottoman seats available in other markets such as Indonesia. So yeah, even though we're paying a very high price, we are not quite getting the top of the line specs here. But as with most of its cars, Toyota has nailed the basics. You've got individual air conditioning vents for all rows and they blow directly to your face as well. You've got a dedicated digital aircon controls down here with a separate blower control plus a button to turn on or off the ambient lighting around the sunroof. Everything feels rather premium here as well. Plus the doors open up really wide giving you a nice aperture to get in and out and the floor is absolutely flat. It is very easy to get in and slide through the center seats to enter the last row. The last row is mostly very good as well. There's plenty of legroom as you can see over here. And of course you can just easily slide the middle row far forward to balance the legroom between the second and third row passengers. And then the headroom is not too bad. I'm sitting up straight over here and my hair is yet to touch the ceiling. I am only 167 centimeters tall. But even if you're much, much taller, you can simply just recline the rear seats like so. When you get much more headroom here. And as you can see, as I recline the seats, the angle of the base also changed together. So you get a much more comfortable seating position overall. For convenience, you get dedicated rear aircon vents for the last row, as well as another 12 volt power socket on the left side. Unfortunately, there are no dedicated USB ports in the back here like there are in the front two rows. And while Toyota officially markets the last row as a three-seater, as you can see, you can't possibly fit three people in the back here. Three kids perhaps, but definitely not three adults. This spare center headrest can easily be removed and put in at a nice dedicated spot on the boot. That is a nice touch though. But there is yet another feature that is missing on our car compared to the higher spec Indonesian version. There you have a nice latch that you can just pull in the back here to move the middle row seats front or back to adjust the legroom. Here there is none, so you have to reach all the way to the side to move the middle row seats forward. That is a bit of a pity that we miss out on such a useful feature here in Malaysia. 
open up the tailgate which is powered by the way on all variants and you get a really nice and spacious boot space as you can see it easily fits a cabin size luggage no problem you can probably stack like five of them in the back here no problems at all now of course you can just as easily fold the third row down just like that and that frees up nearly 700 liters of space this is clearly an extremely practical mpv or suv whatever way you see it in the old innova you can fold the last row of seats but they sort of fold to the side still taking up space here it just falls down flat to the floor freeing up a massive load bay under the flat floor of course is a full size spare tire still now onto the engine, the base 2-litre petrol version gets Toyota's latest dynamic force engine and here it makes 174 PS and 205 newton meters of torque. Now short of Toyota's own 2-litre 86 from before, this is now one of the most powerful 2-litre naturally aspirated engines in the market on an MPV. Now power goes to the front wheels via a 10-speed direct shift CVT, very similar to the one fitted on the high-end Harrier SUV. What it could do with, however, is an engine cover. On to the hybrid electric variant, you get a down-tuned version of the same engine. It's still 2 litres but it makes less power with a much higher thermal efficiency. There is also a large electric motor placed right next to the engine, as is usual with most Toyota hybrid models. And the combined power output is 186 PS and 206 newton meters of torque. Now power goes to the front wheels through an eCVT, again typical of a Toyota hybrid system. Now in terms of performance, this is said to be just slightly quicker than the base 2.0-litre but the biggest advantage is in terms of fuel efficiency. The base 2.0-litre petrol model is claimed to do just under 15 km per litre but this one, the hybrid over here, is claimed to do 21.7 km per litre. That is practically the same fuel economy as a regular MyV but on a much bigger car like this. That is amazing. Now on to safety, the Toyota Zenix gets the full suite of active and passive safety systems. You get six airbags, electronic stability control, and the latest Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 Active Safety Suite. This includes a millimeter wave radar up front and a camera up top that is said to be able to see twice as far compared to similar systems in older Toyota models. This includes autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, level 2 semi-autonomous driving with active lane keep assist, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitor, and so on. Everything you get as standard on this car on both variants as well as it should be. So that's our quick look at the brand new Toyota Innova Xenix now available here in Malaysia. Yes, it is a much more expensive car than before. But as I've shown you, this is also a much bigger, far more upmarket package compared to the older Innova. Do you think that's enough to justify its much higher prices though? That's going to be for you to decide. To me at least, the base 2 litre model at 165,000 ringgit seems to be very good value. The hybrid, however, perhaps less so. So, what do you think of this car? Let me know in the comment section below. For now, thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.